I know it's going to be full of Tupac fans. Let's just be honest. Everybody's a Tupac fan, like you heard. But when you listen to that song and you listen to how Tupac speaks to a woman, he was raised by a strong woman. Mm. And even on this WCW, we're telling the queens, uh, tell your tell your brothers, tell your male friends to come through for this event. It's the second edition of Man Cave, and it's taking place on the 25th of February at the Lake House Tigoni. This is a place where brothers are going to be getting to connect, getting to deal with certain stuff in their life that, you know, they probably don't get to speak about because of so much scrutiny. Now, this is a safe space, and the brothers are going to be talking about two things, identity and legacy. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be a man in today's world where everybody's trying to define manhood according to their own way? Right. You know, what does it mean to be a man of substance you know and what are we leaving this world with identity and legacy great conversations that are going to be had and also the tickets are on sale at kenya buzz there was an offer that ended yesterday if you weren't able to get that one i'm so sorry about that but if you're going to be coming through with a squad of five there's still an offer for you until the 25th of february and that is for ten thousand bob you can get five tickets right there so brothers come through and let's have great conversations about identity legacy and about what it means to be a man in today's age. Ladies, this is a great place for your man to go. You want him to have these kind of friends. Absolutely. That's the circle we're going for. Word. But anyway, when I was younger, mm -hmm. um, I really didn't um, have that much guidance in the sense that, um, you know, if I'm going to pick a man, yeah. it's very important the kind of friends he has mm -hmm. and the things he's doing. That's true. You know, sometimes we're, we're just winging it. Yeah. And there's a lot of things we can say to our younger selves. Right. In the studio, we've got an amazing guest and she's got a conversation that everyone has access to right here on Nation FM. We're going to be introducing something special on this station. And of course, um, this is our very first guest to kind of talk about this amazing experience. Mm -hmm. First of its kind, you yep. know, we, we, we do it first right here in Nation FM. And of course, um, we've got a wonderful woman and uh, how she chooses to tell stories has expanded her profile. Um, some people call her an influencer. Others find her very mystical. Like, who is she? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to find out uh, who she is right here on the WCW edition. Ladies and gentlemen, Maxine Oabosha. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Morning. It is so great to have you here in ninety six point three Nation FM. Thank you for having me. How's your morning? I'm doing pretty well, thank you. How are you doing? Oh, we're we're great, and we're happy to see you here. Um, you have people who saw you, and first thing they said, "Umekujana filter," you know, <laughs> you know, and it's it's uh, it's really great to have you in studio this morning. Um, you and I went to the same school, but that's a whole other thing. Yeah. <laughs> I came to realize that funny enough. But Karibu Sana uh, to 96.3 Nation FM. It's absolutely wonderful to see. Um, Wednesday, it's all about edges, flowers. Edges. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a girl's thing. <laughs> but, you know, what, what I love about um, the work you're currently doing is that um, you're giving a platform to others. Before we jump into... Um, this uh, debut of a letter to my younger self that's going to be right here on Nation FM. Tell us very quickly who you are for the people that um, have never met you in person, in your own words. Who is Maxine Wabosha? Um, my name is Maxine Wabosha, as you've just said. I am a mechanical engineer by training. I am a content creator and most recently a podcast host. Oh, nice. wonderful. I like the way most recently a podcast she host. Me, You're in your second me? season of uh, A Letter to My Younger Self, I believe. Yes. Wow. Could you get her, the cheering squad on there? Because Please. they're coming two right seasons. through. Everyone starts out with a podcast, but they can't keep it up until season two. Word. So congratulations on That's that. That's for you. Thank you. <laughs> so A Letter to My Younger Self starts airing uh, this Sunday on Nation FM from uh, 7 to 8 p.m. And we're super excited. Um, the family's getting bigger. Tell us about why this title and how you started, um, you know, telling uh, this particular story in, the, in this way. Um, a letter to my younger self is actually a COVID baby. Mm. The whole idea came up um, during COVID time. By then, I think I had done four years in content creation and it had gotten a bit monotonous mm -hmm. and I was just looking for other avenues that I could explore and I had not done a podcast yet. So that was, you know, the first thing that we came up with. Right. Um, when we're thinking about the idea of what to do in the podcast, um, first off, the reason that Alisha Tumayang herself came up is that a lot of times when we're being interviewed, we get a lot of the same questions. Mm. And 
and um we thought of doing it differently in the sense that this time the guest would basically drive the conversation so the podcast what happens is when we get a guest they write a letter to their younger selves and then when they come to the show that's what we discuss basically so it's a conversation essentially driven by the guest mm-hmm. yes. oh that's vulnerable Amazing. yeah it's vulnerable how many people would be open to on the mic mm-hmm. right send a letter to the younger self there's a lot of stuff back there yeah man that people find hard to 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 express um and and who are these conversations for because i'm sure that the guests find healing uh you sound like a very personable uh host for the podcast so i think people warm up to you but um who are the conversations for who are you targeting initially we were actually targeting the younger generation because if you see especially the guests um in the first season there were mainly older people um apart from like Foy Wamboy who we had at the time was around 23 has been our youngest guest but then now after season 1 aired we found that a lot um of the guests that, of the listeners that we're getting were older people mm-hmm. so season 2 we had to adjust even um the guests that we were having so right now it's it's widespread mm-hmm. yeah and and what was the importance of having such pivotal conversations because uh back in the day when some of us were growing up mm-hmm. um we went through life so quickly we didn't even have time to say oh if i would sit down i would tell my younger self this yeah. Is that something that you're trying maybe to help change the narrative and you know maybe create a more introspective culture or why is it that these pivotal conversations are being had? I think um for me mainly is to show that success has no one same route. Mm-hmm. Um it's different ways, different struggles in between. So when you listen to all these guests, you find that um people who right now who we think are really successful at some point in their 20s, the common theme that you can see is that no one knew what they were doing, yeah. but then in the end they ended up being successful. So mainly it's just to show people that um we should trust the process. Mm-hmm. That's the main Phew. theme. That makes many of us <laughs> <laughs> like right. there's some scanty details mm. back there and yeah. they come and share these stories to inspire others. Um Maxine, how does your own life compare or mirror some of the conversations that you have with your guests um it's a brilliant selection so far from what i see and i think you've um done a very very good series um when they're sending these letters and and expressing themselves where does maxine come in and how do you compare how do you relate to some of these conversations what's your story um on season 1 actually during john allen's episode I was telling him how it's funny because at the time I was 25 and I was telling him a lot of the older guests when they come in they're all writing letters to their 25 year old selves. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like <laughs> you know they're almost talking to, to me. To you, yeah. Yeah, and John Allen said um it's funny that you say that and if you actually feel like they might be talking to you maybe you should listen because the universe has a funny way of putting things that you need to know. right in, in front, front of, of you. you yeah, yeah. Mm. um so i think basically um just like i mentioned a lot of people when they were writing the 25 year old selves were mentioning how they should just trust the process at that point nothing seems to make sense but in the end when you look back everything you know comes together perfectly so i think um that is <laughs> the most important thing that personally I've gotten from mm-hmm. the podcast. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. She said when I was 25 I'm like how old are you now? <laughs> <laughs> Cuz you're like she's like 20. <laughs> you know, I'm just thinking, you know, it, it it's really good and, and and to open our hearts to to such conversations. Right. I would describe this podcast as introspective. Yeah. Because I think you can actually relate to someone or mm-hmm. something in there and maybe take it easy on yourself mm-hmm. uh, because you get to see the people you admire Right. also talking about when i was 25 mm-hmm. i was still trying to figure things out um season 1 would you describe it as a success how was it um compared to um this new start for you which we're going to be talking about um and how it's going to debut on nation fm uh, how was season 1 for you uh it, it, if you look back on the work that you've done so far 
um getting into being a podcast host first of all i had done nothing <laughs> like that before i hadn't interviewed anyone i uh-huh. was so used to being on the other side of the table yeah. right. so there was a lot of practice like mock practice interviews okay. where i would fake interview a lot of people and of course there was butterflies i was <laughs> only so nervous uh-huh. my first episode Oh my god, I can remember it was so nerve-wracking. <laughs> and then after it was over, I was like, "Oh my god, it actually went pretty well." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um and so when the episode started dropping, mm-hmm. um I was so overwhelmed by like the reception and everything and we had a lot of people on the comment section or even um DMing me mm-hmm. letters mm-hmm. that they had written That's to beautiful. their younger selves. Yeah, so the reception was really really nice and I also um loved to see people write the letters to their younger selves and a lot of the people said that it was almost therapeutic yeah. you know to just sit down and do it because it really forces you <laughs> to sit down and be honest with yourself mm-hmm. um about you know things that you did when you were younger the lessons that you've learned from it so yeah season 1 was really really successful yeah, yeah. um and are, are there any guidelines or how do you walk um your guest into getting into um writing a, a letter to their younger self mm-hmm. uh because again you aptly say even your experience was a little bit nerve-wracking you know and by the time they're done with the episode i'm sure they feel like such a release um is there anything you take them through maybe a series of questions or is there something you look for in an episode mm-hmm. where you're able to guide your guests in order to get to the desired outcome that you want It's actually very open. Mm-hmm. We don't try to steer like how we think um at the conversation should go. So the people just write whatever they feel like they should write. Although um having done like both seasons now, mm-hmm. um you can definitely see a theme. Uh-huh. Like a lot of people will talk about family, a lot of people talk about friendship, love, education is mm-hmm. also a big one. So in as much as we don't guide it you can almost see the same themes yeah, in the everyone yeah. letters mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, I like that there's a freedom for yeah. guests to you know speak their minds and mm-hmm. tell yeah. their stories in their own way mm-hmm. because behind the scenes in production there's always some sort of script mm. um I apologize to everyone I've ever worked with <laughs> for <laughs> never staying on script but you know that's my kind of thing this is my kind of podcast um and 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 looking back at season 1 because that is the reason you're birthing um season 2 which mm-hmm. is going to be on Nation FM uh, I'm super excited about it um tell us some of the guests that you've had on your show And one of the things that stood out for you. What are some of those shocking things you're like, "Okay, I know I opened the floor. <laughs> I know I said letter to my younger <laughs> self, but hey, you shouldn't say that." <laughs> um, have you ever heard anything shocking? You don't necessarily have to say who, but one, who are some of the guests you've um had the privilege of hosting? And and what's the most shocking thing you've heard <laughs> on your podcast? <laughs> Um so far we've had about 20 guests. Uh-huh. Wonderful. So like I've mentioned Jen Allen before, we've mm. had Wendy Agishuru, we've had Tatiana Karanja, we've had Eli Mwenda, Foyo Mboy, Joy Kendi, just to mention a few. Okay. Mm. Uh, um I think everyone is usually truly vulnerable in the letters, mm-hmm. but I think up to date um season 1 the first ever episode that we shot when there's episode yeah yeah that one i think she was really really open uh-huh. yeah. if you've not watched when there's episode yet i'm sure you'll really enjoy it uh-huh. yeah <laughs> I, i think that's that. a wonderful tease <laughs> too. the way she's like go search for mm-hmm. it i'm going to be like hmm. you going love it i want to <laughs> hear <laughs> some stuff. get some popcorn <laughs> i want to hear what it is so we want to celebrate with you and we are so 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 excited we know that there's so much ahead uh, i'm curious if there's a uh, season 3 uh, but um you know i'm sure there's an impact on the audience um and that's why you are jumping on a bigger platform i love the collaboration between mainstream and you know uh, urban culture and yeah. the fact to come to know that you've got your own audience to come to come here uh, we're excited because uh, right here on nation fm sundays from 7 to 8 you're going to be on plug and play and of course uh, that is one of the podcasts going to be featured there a letter to my younger self maxine wabosha this is going to be exciting mm. are you excited and of course um how does How does this feel to have your podcast on national radio? I'm excited. I'm mm. definitely definitely very very excited. 
um when i was starting off season one i'm not sure that i saw it going this far mm-hmm. yeah so this it's it's very encouraging as well yeah mm. yeah it's a big achievement huh Totally. There's a lot of people who've been, you know, sitting with their podcasts mm-hmm. thinking, is there someone willing to listen? There's always someone wanting and craving mm-hmm. yeah, um, your, your, your genre of content. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm keen to see uh, Wabosha in the next 10. Uh, where do you see yourself? Because you're mm-hmm. probably going to be writing a letter to your younger self <laughs> <laughs> in, 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 the, in the next 10 years. Um, where, where do you see Maxine in, 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 in the coming years? Ha, that's that's a question that I always struggle answering and the answer always changes mm-hmm. yeah. each year. Mm. Um in ten years, gosh, I'm like thirty seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm hoping that Me too. <laughs> 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 um in the next ten years yeah. I'm hoping that in the next ten years Let me sort that out for you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, in the next 10 years, I'm mm. hoping that uh, my business will have grown, will have gone um, international. Um, I'm hoping that um, the podcast will have grown so much more as well. By then, it should be like season 20 nice. or something like that. Um, it would also be very interesting to see how the content space will have evolved. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, and hoping to still be in it. Yeah. yeah. Right. In my home, we say amen. <laughs> amen. It is done. <laughs> For sure. Yeah? Yeah. Then now you have to, 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 to put the work into yeah. it. And of course, you have a lot of people who've never met you in person rooting for you. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure when people meet you in person, they're always like, is it her? Can I say hi? Can I take a <laughs> selfie? Yeah. Um, before we let you go very quickly, what are some of the misconceptions um, Wabosha online versus now? In real life. In real life. Yeah. And now I feel like I feel like I know you after this conversation. Yeah. Um, what's the difference? Are you very far off from, you know, the glam and the filters and, and, and social culture and having to be, you know, on each time? Mm-hmm. Uh, who, 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 who's who of the two of Maxine's? I think um, Maxine online is a bit more, let's say, put together and... Some people describe me as shy, uh-huh. but like in real life, I'm very fun loving, mm-hmm. yeah. very fun loving, very easy going, very relaxed. I think that's the main difference between online Maxine versus in person Maxine. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so you can uh, connect with Maxine on social media. How can we get in touch with you? We want to make sure we cheer you on on your debut yes, on Plug absolutely. and Play Nation FM. How can we connect with you on social media? On all platforms, I am on Huabosha Maxine, and the podcast is at A Letter to My Younger Self on all platforms as well. Brilliant. Congratulations. Love it. Thank you. I am Gotta get the so, claps so for you. happy mm. for you. Right. Oh. <laughs> Our own Janae Aiko. I, She's I giving mean. that subtle energy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And right. I can't wait to hear um, all these stories from other people. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's, it's going to be a beautiful experience.